What's up? My name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can protect your server against the brand new exploit Log4J. It's a huge exploit that allows remote code execution on practically any Java program that can receive information and then runs it through Log4J, as far as I understand, an Apache little plugin, something along those lines. It's a super simple breakdown. Basically, if you'd like a much better explanation in the description down below, I've linked a brilliant video from John Hammond over here. And as just an example of how scary this can be, you can see he runs a command and poof, something as simple as calculator opens up on a client's computer, connects to a server, etc., which is really bad to say the least. You can get people to download malicious code and then run it at whatever permission level Java is currently running at. Incredibly scary stuff, and that's exactly why this is such a serious thing. If you didn't understand how serious it was, now you definitely do. Fixing this is easier said than done. However, Minecraft and the Minecraft community have made it really simple to do. There's not only an official solution, which you'll find linked down below, and we'll go through in just a moment, on the Java security fix for vanilla Minecraft here. If you're using a third-party client such as Forge, Spigot, Paper, etc, etc, you're going to need to look to those vendors in order to get a solution, and more than likely, you'll be downloading either 1.18.1 if you're running 1.18, and you'll have the issue fixed, or running 1.17 and below, you'll likely have to download a new jar file to replace your current server jar. In this video, I'll be running through and lightly touching on the vanilla fix over here. So in this blog post in the description down below, scroll down to game server and you'll see if you're running 1.18, upgrade to 1.18.1, super simple. If you're not able to update, then you can use the same approach as 1.17x below. All you have to do is add the following JVM arguments to your startup command line. So I'll quickly set up a basic vanilla server to show you what it means. So as you can see, I currently have the server running here. I'll simply run save hyphen all and stop to gently close out of my server. When it's done, I'll head across to the server install directory. And even though that this is a 1.18 server, all I have to do is open up my run.bat, start.bat or whatever it is with a text editor of your choice. Then after Java, whatever the RAM commands are, right before the hyphen jar, paste in the command from the web page over here. Hit Control S to save and start up your server once again. Note that this is only for 1.17 and above, but below 1.18.1 where this is automatically fixed. At this point, your server should then be working and fixed. However, looking further down, for every server between 1.12 and 1.16.5, you need to download a file by clicking the link over here. This file is an XML file, so what you need to do is right-click the link, then click Save Link As, and simply save it as is into your server's folder as such. Now, if I have a look over here, you can see the brand new log4j, tube, etc, etc, .xml file here in the same folder as our Minecraft server. According to this document, we then need to add this bit of code the same way that we did previously. So right click copy, head into the start.bat, run.bat once again with your favorite text editor, and it'll look something like this. Click right before the dot jar, paste it in, save, close it, and run your server. Then things should be working properly once again, and we should have patched the vulnerability. However, if you're between 1.7 and 1.11.2, you need to download this file and add this command instead. Because it's a verbatim rinse and repeat of exactly what we did, I won't be covering this. It's once again, right click, save link as, and add this command to your service start. As you can see, versions below 1.7 are not affected. So you're safe if you're below 1.7 and you're safe automatically if you're on 1.18.1 or above. Everything in between these two, you need your server to be protected against these. Well, I could say don't connect to anyone's server or don't connect to anyone's server who looks malicious. You don't really need to worry about it at this current point in time. The official game client has been patched. All you have to do is relaunch it and it should be downloaded automatically. However, modified clients and third party launches might not automatically be updated as they're not run by Minecraft, Microsoft, etc, etc. So you could very well be vulnerable if you're running a custom client such as say MultiMC. Then as you see here, they have their own steps to fixing it or they'll tell you that it's automatically being updated. 
It really depends what client you're using and how it'll be solved then. If you're using a client that isn't updated anymore, just be very careful about what servers you're joining, as if you join one that isn't protected on the server side, well then unfortunately you may still be vulnerable to this. It's a huge deal, especially with something as dangerous and day zero as this is, so all I really wish you is to be safe out there. At this point, you have successfully protected yourself and your server if you follow those simple steps. Once again, if you'd like more information, you'll find that brilliant video by John Hammond linked in the description down below, where you'll find lots more information and learn a lot more about it. That's especially important if you're running a huge server group or something like that, that video will come in handy for you. But anyways, that's about it for this quick video. My name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot, stay safe out there, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.